I'm going to Noss on a boat. So I'm going out with Shetland Seabird Tours and it's uh, one of the tour boats that work out of Larrick Harbour doing Noss trips and we're going to go around to the island of Noss and see the, the seabird colonies. So Noss is an island which sits at the back of Bressa. So Bressa is the island that Larrick looks across at and then behind that we have the island of Noss. And Noss is now an uninhabited island. It's not very big. It's probably like, I don't know, a mile, mile and a half or something. But it's got one of the best gannet colonies in the country. And it's got towering sandstone cliffs uh, with lots of ledges which thousands of gannets will nest on through the breeding season. So it's an incredible co uh, seabird colony. You can go to Noss on a day trip, you can get a boat across during the, like a ferry across. I can't ferry, it's a, a rib, so a rigid inflatable boat. And like the wardens that are based on the island monitoring the seabirds will take visitors across and you can do like an island hike. And that's really good, you get up to the top of the cliffs where you can see the puffins and everything, but it doesn't give you that same kind of sense of the colony. So I actually tend to recommend doing a boat tour to Noss. You also get the perspective of seeing Shetland for the sea, which is quite quite unique. It's quite a different perspective when you're looking at it from the water. Um, so you leave Larrick Harbour, get all that fantastic views, looking at Jimmy Perez's house, the Lodbury's, South Commercial Street and just the backdrop of the town. Go out the harbour around Bressa and then on to Noss and the boat takes you right into the heart of the colonies. So I don't know why I'm explaining all this when I could just take you along, which I'm going to do. But I thought I would just come on here quickly and say hello and tell you what we are going to do. So yeah, I'll see you at the pier for our late afternoon Nos trip. So I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you soon. Coast Guard to come back and then we will be on our way. So while we're just waiting on the Coast Guard, just on the right here is a little bird swimming to the right. That is the black guillemot. Now they're known locally. Sorry, so that bird over the right there, that's the tiny. On the right here, look. Might see their red legs if they decide to show them to drive the light. But they're paired up now, most of these orcs are all paired up, getting ready to breed. They're just doing the count of black guillemots at the moment. It's this time of year when people walk the coastline very, very early in the morning and count the numbers of green colonies. Now, that might 
plenty of big fruit there. I forget my eyes, but uh, maybe it's the first stretch of the season. So these are going to be, maybe it's a mix of common guillemot and razor bill. I can definitely see razor bills, they might all be razor bills. Razor bills are obviously bigger than the black guillemot, and uh, they're much blacker on the back than guillemots, common guillemots, and they have a white dash along the beak towards the eye. You can probably see that in the light, but their bill is quite thick. So these birds can carry eight to ten sand eels in one go back to their chick, because they've got this lovely thick beak with these little barbs on them. So these are all razor bills. So they're much jet, jetter black on the blacks and they've got that thick beak with that white dash that goes along the beak to the eye. And they're, they're having a bit of, uh, look, they're bonding, look, you see the two in the middle? The little bit of the beak kept together. Very romantic. They lay one egg and they nest out on the cliffs, find little holes in the cliffs to nest in little cavities. Not like the common guillemots which all pack themselves tightly together. So I said about the bee cow, this bird here carries eight to ten sand eels. The puffin, you've all seen the puffin speak, it's if you've not seen one in real life. whale or a dead fish they would be pecking away at it just trying to get a few uh, tidbits really. The other purpose of that tube is it sieves out the salt in the water because they do not visit fresh water so the only thing they can drink is the sea water so they need to get rid of the salt great for them. so it has a little tube on top of the beak. Now these are a very common seabird here in Shetland. You'll find these on every bit of cliff. There'll be on quarries, dry stone walls, old croft walls. They breed everywhere and uh, they look beautiful. They do look like mini albatrosses. Now if that bird found itself in the middle of a field, it's going to die because its legs are so far back on its body and its wings are so stiff, it can't physically take off. They uh, failed at the chick stage and they were most likely killed by fullness. And we haven't got white-tailed eagles breeding for the same reason that Fulmers will land at their nest and vomit on them the oil. And it is an oil. Without a detergent, they can't clean themselves. The feathers become massive and lose the ability to fly. Houses, so built by the grandparents of Robert Louis Stevenson, 1858 this one. No longer occupied of course, it's all automated now with GPS and radar. You can actually see the radar spinning around there on the right hand side. That's where the foghorn used to be on that round turret but that's now been removed. And I don't know if you can see just down to the right of that spinning radar there is a little grey post sticking up. That is the modern day lighthouse. Okay, it's a little LED light on a post. The actual light tower doesn't work anymore, it's been decommissioned. And uh, nobody lives there at all now. The left-hand building, I think, used to be uh, self-catering, but Covid got an end to that, and it's kind of disrepair. But Laurie may know. Is that, who bought it? Is that Arts Foundation or something? It still belongs to the Shetland Amenity Trust. about 30 metres and opens out into another big cave. You can actually get out in there and survive, basically. I think he was being chased by the press gang and forced into the war and didn't want to do that, so hid away in here. There's also tales of smugglers and things like that. There's a lot of history behind the cave. But more importantly, there is a couple of birds that love this cave, so we're going to just creep on in. Actually, there are a couple of the first species at home which only just arrived back, and that is the kittiwake. So the kittiwake is a very small species of gull. It's not the kind of gull that's going to steal your fish and chips in town. It's a sand eel specialist. It loves sand eels. Now sand eels we've talked about before, they're very high in calorific value, very good in fat for the chicks. 
Unfortunately, they were overfished for years and years, and our seabirds have been declining because of that. Now, they have just banned sand eel fishing around the whole of the UK this year, so hopefully that is going to make a difference. But, for example, the Kittyweight on lots 15 years ago, you would have seen 7,000 pairs. Last year, there were 63. So they're in rapid decline. Now, that's two Kittyweights up here on the right. And actually, that is where they're going to nest. They will, there'll be about 15 pairs up there. They'll plaster their nest with mud and grass, and they'll lay two eggs. Now, one of the big issues there is the, are the great black-backed gulls. They fly up there and snatch their chicks, their hormones. But uh, so out of 15 pairs, normally they fledge maybe just four or five chicks in total. Now their name comes from their corn, so they're about kitty wig, kitty wig, kitty wig. As you can see, they're not lost by that. But yeah, they are beautiful birds. Unlike other gulls, when they fly, they've got these beautiful black tips to their wings. They look like a kitty in it. There are no little white uh, mirrors, as we call them. Now the other bird that lives in the cave is the European shag. Shags are like cormorants, big black birds, long necks. But shags are much more maritime than cormorants. Cormorants like fresh water a lot of the time. We only have about 200 pairs of cormorants in uh, Shetland, but we have thousands of pairs of shags. So on that pinnacle of rocks on the right foot, there's a shag. So there's about four pairs breathing here, and they're still in the nest. It's a real character. It's all risen up. Just for those who want another bird, low down on the left is an oyster catcher. It's a black and white wading bird with a big carrot beak. There's actually a pair of them there, big orange beak. He's not a taker. Which way is the moon that way? Right, we'll throw it in now. If there's a great black back gull, he's going to lose out, but I don't see any right now. But that fish is a bit big for a bonksy, so he'll have a go at swallowing it, but for the and then the gannets will have him look, boom, oh, and he'll swallow that hole. There's a couple of gannets about, we'll see if we can have a bit of fun with them. We're going to have fun with the gannets anyway, I don't know which way the fish is going to drift. Oh, the other way.